First Ninja Impling, what do we get? <laughs> I mean it sells. <laughs> I don't need it, but it sells. So, I got all the um, Implings that's required for the Impling Jar Generator, so I'm just going to go back to Puro Puro quickly and grab that, and then I won't have to worry about continuously trying to trade in Implings for Jars. Also uses very little inventory space, which is handy for an ultimate. Um, let's have a look. So if we trade this guy here, he should give me the chance to trade in these for a jar generator. Bam. I'm also going to trade in this earth and pling to give me another three jars. So that's lovely. There we go. And now I'm going to go back and try and hunt down some ninjas and hopefully I can get better than a dragon dagger. I also caught a magpie while looking for the ninja and got some mystic boots. That will help with the money as well. I can sell that. That's really good. So. Back to Sears then. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Got Mystic Boots again. Uh, the other ones were from a magpie actually. Um, just a reminder, we are trying to get the 4 Noted Weapon Poison P+. That's the goal here. It's a 1 in 19 drop rate, so it shouldn't take too long. Ninja Rimpling number 3. Uh oh. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. What do we get? <laughs> That's useless. I don't need this. Oh dear. So I just chased this ninja impling all the way up here, and there's a magpie impling next to it. What are the chances? Alright, so we'll open the magpie first. See what we get from this. Oh, that, that sells for a lot. That's good. And the ninja impling. A rune simi. That will sell as well. I don't mind that. So apparently this doesn't give magic XP if your magic level is below 51. So we shall see. Hopefully this doesn't ruin the account. Moment of truth. Beautiful. Seven fishing. That's a good start because I need to do fishing contest which requires ten fishing. I think this is Ninja Impling number five? What do we get? I got a hard clue scroll. <laughs> oh, this is never getting done. That's a wilderness clue. Yeah. Not happening. Funny, but not happening. Mystic Boots again, I've got three pairs of these now. Don't get me wrong, they're going to sell for plenty, but it's not the weapon poison. And we get... Another Dragon Dagger. More money, still not weapon poison. And from this one we get... 70 Rune Arrows. See what we get from this annoying ninja impling. Not worth. And this is ninja impling number 10. Come on, about halfway on the drop rate. A split box helm. Still not what I want. It will sell though. Ninja impling number 11. Please do not go over the wall. And we get. Rune knives. Look what I found while hunting for ninja implings. A dragon impling. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not that upset. It's not that useful for me. Uh, not yet, anyway. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to catch some of these and get a glory for my house. But until then, I'm not too bothered. No, There was a magpie impling and this guy took it. Oh, sad. Found another magpie impling. I'm gonna grab this one real quick. Not having this one stolen off me. I haven't seen any ninja implings in a while. I think I've exhausted this area. So after I catch this, I'm probably going to 
head over to a different spot. I'm thinking I'm going to try Gnome Stronghold, as I know that there are a couple of Impling spawns in there, and it should be quite easy for me to find some in there. Hopefully I can catch this magpie. It's taking a sweet time. There we go. Right, we'll have to drop something just so I can check what this is, and we get... Mystic Gloves! I broke the jar though, which is annoying, but hey, that's not bad. I can sell that. Um, I'm also going to go sell off some of this stuff on the way over there because then I've got space to loot more implings and we'll see what we can get. Okay, so I've just made a quick pit stop here in uh, Ardia. I'm going to sell the items here to the shop. Um, unfortunately, I cannot... I think these items have speciality shops. Um, I know that Split Bark and Mystic does, however I can't access this shop because that requires 66 magic, which obviously I cannot have. Um, I'm not sure about everything else, however, even if there was a speciality shop, it's a lot of effort for me to go and get it, so... I feel like me just doing this here is a lot better. That's basically nothing, we're just going to dump them. Unfortunately that's basically nothing as well, and I can't really do anything with this for a very long time, so that's going to be dumped as well. How much do we get for these? 9.6k, and then how much do we get now? I'm going to hopefully wait, maybe that will sell, but uh, we'll have a look. These are 4k each, we'll sell one of them. How much do they drop? 200, what about these? 4k for these, beautiful. 66, I'm just going to sell all of these, because I don't care, what about these, 4.8, lovely, 4k, lovely, 10k, lovely, 15, even better, that's nothing, I'm going to hold on to this, maybe I can get a loop half and possibly get some rune legs or something from the crystal chest, that will sell nicely, so we'll hold on for that for now, uh, looks like the dragon dagger sold, so I can sell another one, uh, what about Mr. Boots, yep, they've gone as well, so I can sell another one of them, how much are these going to go for? 176, we'll just settle these. 16.6, nearly 100k, this has been a lot of money. More than I expected, to be honest. Um, tempted to wait a minute and try and get an extra 200 for them. I'm not sure if I care enough. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds. If it hasn't done it, then I'm just going to sell it. I think it's a minute. I think it updates every minute, so I'd have to wait a whole minute. Oh, there they go. Okay, cool. I'll just sell them then. Done. So I finished off at 92,420, that is beautiful, which means I should finish this entire thing with potentially 100,000 coins, which would be really nice. Um, so I'm going to head over to Gnome Stronghold and see if I can find some imps. So I just got to the Gnome Stronghold and I completely forgot about this. Uh, I have the option to help Femi. Um, this doesn't really benefit me at all in the future as I'm not going to be doing the Gnome Quest storyline. However, I've decided that I'm going to do it anyway. Just... why not? I'll hop up with the boxes and then I can go into here. Only just got it, I haven't even equipped my butterfly yet, and I've already found a magpie implant. Great start, uh, let's see what we can get from this guy. Another two path, okay, I still need the loops. I'm not actually sure if magpies give the loop, they might only give the two path. But we'll keep catching them and see what we get. What a great place to hunt implings. I've literally gone just to the next world and I just saw a ninja impling in here. There he is. See if we can catch this guy. Hopefully it doesn't mess me about like that one did before. Oh, first try, and we get a rune simi. Beautiful. Found another dragon impling, this time in the gnome stronghold. Once again, sucks that I can't catch it, but I don't really need it. However, what is funny is since saying that this was such a great place to hunt implings, I have not found another ninja impling. I've now seen the same amount of dragon implings as I have ninja implings. How ridiculous is that? Finally got another one. Please be something good. Sneakskin booze. It's not exactly amazing. <sighs> um, I'm probably going to move down to where the bank and the agility arena is in a bit, uh, because this area just isn't panning out. I know I originally said it was a really good area, but that's because I got super lucky. Having to hop about 100 worlds and not even finding a magpie impling is kind of disappointing, so I'm probably going to move down to the bank in a bit. Right, so in the process of hopping every single possible world available to me, I have encountered two ninja implings, two magpie implings, and a dragon impling, which therefore says to me that this area isn't as good as I'd hoped it was. The Sears area actually proved to be a lot better than this one, so I'm now going to walk down to where the bank and the agility course are, um, because I believe that there are a few spawns around there as well. Uh, I'm going to hop through every world in that area, and we'll see how that goes. So, I just found another Dragon Impling that I can't catch. Still haven't found a Ninja Impling. I did find a Magpie Impling a minute ago, but I kind of forgot to record, so... 
Uh, I got three diamond amulets from that, which I'm going to sell in Ports Rim later. But another dragon imp that I can't catch. Lovely. Let's see what we get from this. More room for an axes. Eh. So I just got back to Ardy. We're just going to dump these items back in like we did before. Uh, so much good split box gloves. Uh, it's okay, it's not too bad. What about snake skin boots? Oh, that's nothing. Uh, we'll sell that off anyway. These give me a little bit, don't they? Yep. Uh, the Rune Simi should put me over the 100k mark. Look at that, 108,000 coins. I don't think these go for anything. I'm just holding on to these for now, just for fun. I don't think I'm ever going to use them, but we'll see. So, I've just found my first lucky impling. Obviously I can't catch this, but it's a cool thing to find. Never actually seen one on this account yet. So here we have the ninja imbling on the drop rate. Are we going to get it? It would be really nice if we could, but um, we'll see. Nope, we got rune darts. So we are now on the drop rate for the poison, and I still need to catch more. So I'd stopped recording catching magpie implings, however I did just catch one and got a loop half of key. Which is cool because now I can do this and this and make a crystal key. Which I'll use to open the crystal chest. Hopefully I can get some rune items, uh, which I can sell. So I've been looking for ninja implings for a while now and I can't find any, um, I'm kind of getting really bored of this, so I think I'm going to take a quick break, I'm going to go down to Cathabee and sell off all these items, and then I'm going to use some of the money to buy arrow tips to finally get rid of these headless arrows that I've got here, because I realised that I buy the arrow tips in Cathabee anyway and I'm going to be there. So I'm going to head down there now and we'll see how much flexion I can get done. Back at Arheen, I'm just going to sell these Dagnoff Hide. Uh, I also had to eat half this meat pizza when I was chasing the ninja impling um, because I nearly died to a wolf. I sometimes forget that I'm level 3. Uh, that's 20k for that. Uh, what else have we got here? Sell off all of them. Don't need rings of life. Uh, the rest I'll sell to specialist shops and do what I do with them later. I'm going to keep this half of meat pizza for now just in case I need it to keep myself alive. So here we are with Hickton. If I'm right, he sells arrow tips. I am correct. I believe I can only make iron. I think steel arrows are at level 30. So how much do these cost? Two coins. How much do they cost now? Three. Three. Um. I think I might buy 200 per world. 
That's uh, 15 worlds. Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy 200 per world uh, and I'll get back once I've bought all the tips. And there we go, just going to buy up the last 43 now. I've also realised that this shop uh, sells rune arrows. Well, even though they don't in stock. However, while well, hunting, I got 140 of them. I was going to sell them to the general store, but I actually forgot. Which is really good because I get extra money from selling them here. I should definitely do a few of these per world. <laughs> I've been able to hop a few times and sell off these as well. Uh, there we have it, the last lot sold. So I'm now just going to fletch all of these into arrows and we'll see what fletching level I get. Right, there's uh, all the iron arrows made. I got all the way to 28 fletching. Um, I'm probably just going to dump them in this shop to be honest. I don't even think it'll give me much. Uh, I'll probably go down to zero now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just going to drop them. I don't really care. They're just iron arrows. It's a good bit of Fletch XP and I've finally got an extra space in my inventory now. Number 56. <gasps> we finally got it! Oh my god, 56 ninja implings! I was almost... I was one ninja away from three times the drop rate, and we finally got the weapon poison drop. For a second, I, I nearly stopped the recording. I was so used to just catching imp after imp with hopeless means of getting the weapon poison. But we finally got it, oh my god. So now that we've got the um, weapon poison, the first thing I want to do is clear up some of this inventory space. So I'm going to head over to Burthorp and run down to Tavoli so I can use up these crystal keys. Um, I'm going to do a bit of research to see on how if I can use the sinister keys or not. I'm not sure if it's going to be that convenient for me to use them. But uh, we're going to run down to Tavoli and see if we can get some rune items. That would be the best result here because I can sell that off for some money. I'm not really bothered what I get, because either way I'm going to be selling it, so I can't really make use of anything from the crystal chest. I decided to go to the general store in Burthorpe, just in case I get a uh, rune drop, as in like elemental runes from the crystal chest. Uh, I feel like I'd need the uh, inventory space to hold that. Also, I'm going to be selling these general store anyway, so it doesn't hurt to just sell them all off here. Just make sure, yeah, normal prices. Just dump all of that here, sell that. That looks good. Right, we're going to head back down to the crystal chest then. So here we are at the crystal chest. Here's the first key. What do we get? Oh, I've got to use on the chest. Okay, here, what do we get? Uh, 100 coal. You see, now this would be useful, but not right now. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the world. Next one. Lovely, spinach roll, useless. And the last one, Swordfish. None of them were very good, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I can go sell off all this stuff, just see what I can get for it. I'm probably going to head over to Alcarid, um, sell off these diamonds, 
Um, and then I'm going to go over to Port's Room and I'm going to sell all of these. So I'll see you in the next clip. So I've sold off some of my other stuff to the general store and despite the fact that these guys only offer me 400 per Dragonstone, I don't actually have any other way of selling these other than by selling them for Topple, in which case I think I only get 150 per Dragonstone. It's really not worth it. So I'm just going to sell these for 400. It's unfortunate, but I don't need them, and I need the space, so goodbye. Now I'm going to head over to Port's Room and set off these diamond amulets. While passing through Drainer Village, I thought it might be a good idea, now that I've got plenty of money, to grab a Chronicle and some pages. This gives me a teleport pretty much to Varrock, uh, which has a level 3 is kind of awkward to do anyway. So I think it's a good idea, I can chuck all of these in here. And nice, now I have a uh, teleport up to Varrock. Right, so I've got to the uh, jewellery shop in Port's Room, and we'll see how much he offers for these. 2.3k per diamond amulet. How much does that go down for? Okay. Okay, I might try and sell these for like 2k each, so I'll hop a couple of times and sell these off. They don't even go down that much, actually. I think that'll go below 2k. Right, so that's what, Fiverr World? Alright, I'm going to hop Fiverr World, uh, and then I'll... See you in the next clip. And there we go, that's everything sold. So we finished with a final cash pile of 454k. It's a lot more than I thought I'd had, but it's also a lot more implings than I thought I would need, so that doesn't surprise me. I did some research on the Sinister Keys, and all I need is, I think, 46 agility. Um, however, I'm going to be training agility soon anyway, so I think I might keep hold of these, and when I can, I'll go use them. I am aware that there are monsters in the dungeon, but I think if I bring food I should be okay to just use up these two keys. Right, so I've just headed back to Lumbridge. Um, I'm going to get 25 thieving, as uh, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of quests in a moment, and one of them is dig site, and that requires 25 thieving, and I feel like while I'm here I might as well start pickpocketing men. Uh, in Pots Rim, I did stock up on some food, I bought the pineapples from the charters and then noted them with the leprechaun. So I can use this and go to the bank and cut them. I'm going to go grab the knife from over here, which I've just realised I've forgotten to go and get. But I'll go grab the knife and I can unnote these and then cut them up into food uh, for to keep me alive while I'm thieving. I am aware that I could just let myself die, respawn, pick up all my stuff and carry on. However, I don't really want to do this. Um, first of all, I'm not sure what happens to the lamps if I die. I might lose them. And secondly... I like to just try and keep this account alive as long as I can. Um, I'm yet to die on this account, so it'd be fun to see how long I can go before dying. There we have 25 thieving. That's the requirement for dig site done. Now, what I need to do next is Druidic Ritual. However, Druidic Ritual requires four different types of meat, two of which I can buy from Wyden's food store in Ports of Rim. However, the other two I have to get by killing a bear and a rat. Now, as a level 3, I obviously don't want any experience, so I'm going to be using a little method that actually won't give me any experience, but requires this. And this is the main reason why I got this, was to actually complete Druidic Ritual. So, I'm going to head over to the giant bear, and I'll show you how this works. Before heading over to the bear, I've just popped to the Vrock Sword Shop, because I need to grab an iron dagger which I can poison to use this method. So I'm just going to go to the bank, unnote one of these, and poison this dagger. And then I'll resume the clip when I get to the bear in the southeast of Varrock. So I've decided to use, for this example, the giant rat that I needed to kill, as the bear was taking a lot longer to deal the damage to. Um, here we are in the freeze frame. I've got myself set up for this kill. I've got myself cups of tea in the inventory, which allows me to boost my attack to free to increase the chance of hitting. So if we roll this clip, you'll see how this method works. See, I, in this case, I have another account that is currently killing the giant rat, and just before the giant rat dies, I have chosen to attack the giant rat and open an interface to stall my character. Once the, the rat dies, it will begin its respawn timer. If I close this window just before the monster respawns, specifically less than one tick, I will then attack the rat upon the respawn and I will not gain any experience. It's a very complicated method, I will not go too far into detail about it, there are many guides of it on YouTube, however I did want this to be demonstrated on video so that you could see for yourself and understand how I've done this method. Um, for future monsters I will be using this, I probably won't be showing it on video just because I've explained how it works now 
and hopefully everyone understands. If not, like I said, there are many videos on YouTube that explain how this is done, so feel free to go and look them up and enlighten yourself. After killing the giant rat, I went over and did the exact same thing for the bear, and that will be why I have both meats in my inventory. Bearing in mind this was one of my first attempts at doing this method, I did mess up a few times, I got some combat XP, which you'll notice in future I have some attack XP. As you'll see here, I hit the one on the rat, and then I went and hid behind the bush, and I just waited for the rat to die. Obviously, poison isn't guaranteed, so this took me quite some time. As you can see in the, the time at the bottom, it was nearly an hour I spent doing this, but I eventually got it done, and this is how I got the meat. So, moving on to the next clip, now you understand how this is done, hopefully that clears up any questions, and I will see you in the next clip, which will be a live clip. So after beating both the bear and the rat, after many 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 attempts, this took way longer than it should have done, um, I resorted to using T to get an attack boost, as you'd have seen in the example video, um, because I just couldn't hit them. But now I've got the rat and the bear meat, I'm going to go to Wyden's food store to get the chicken and the beef, and then I'm going to go complete Druidic Ritual. Here we are at Wyden's food store, I just thought I'd put this bit in the video just to... Firm, raw beef, raw chicken. Now I'm going to head up to Tavoli uh, and hopefully not die doing this quest. There are some skeletons that might kill me. I'm probably going to unnote some of these and take some food with me to try and keep myself alive. There's all the meat dumped. Back to cake mix. And here we are at Samfu. Um, I thought it was cake mix, apparently it's not. It's Samfu, so let's talk to him quickly. Wasn't as hard as I expected, I only had to eat one pineapple ring. Um, and there we go, but cake mix to finish the quest, that was nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. I only had to eat one pineapple ring while doing that. Finally, I have unlocked the Herblore skill. There we go, quest complete. My next goal on the account is to complete the dig site quest, but for that I need 10 agility, so I've just used my minigame teleport, uh, teleported over to Castle Wars and now I'm walking up to the gnome stronghold to start training some agility. And there we have 10 agility, now that's done. I actually need to quickly go and do Prince Ali Rescue, I completely forgot about this, but I need, uh, I need Prince Ali Rescue done for a certain method that I'm going to be using. It's times like this, you really feel the struggle of being an ultimate Iron Man with this inventory management. Oh my god, quests are annoying. And there we are, Prince Ali Rescue completed. Now, this allows me to play the Sorceress's Garden minigame, um, which is a minigame that's generally used to train thieving. However, for those of you who don't know, there is a secondary option you can do while the, doing this minigame, and it allows you to collect herbs. So I'm going to be using this to train my herb lore up to level 10, which I need for the dig site quest. So I think I just have to talk to Osman here. And he should tell me where to get them. So the squirk juice is what would give me the thieving experience, however there are two options in the garden that I can go for, and the other is to ga gather pure herbs. The area where you actually go to the garden is down here, uh, I don't think I can use the teleport option until I've spoke to her first, let me have a try. Yeah, so I need to talk to her first, and if I go through the correct dialogue options, which was not that, whoops. And there we go. From here on onwards, I can always right click around and select teleport. Now, um, because of my female level, I can actually access two of these gardens. However, the winter garden is the one, main one I want, as it's the lowest level garden. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see there's the squirk tree. This is what you'd collect if you wanted to train female. However, I can also run over here and pick herbs. Both of these will teleport me out of the garden and I'll have to repeat it. Um, I'm going to show a clip of me completing this garden. Um, and then I'm going to farm herbs up until I can get 10 herb lore. So 
So at this point I'm actually just doing, going to ignore the squirk tree and I'm going to go over here and I can pick some of these and it'll also give me farming experience which is really nice. Ah, see I didn't really want Marantil but that's okay. Um, I mainly need Guam because if I get Guam I can make attack potions and that's all I really need to get to level 10. So I just wanted to put this clip in there. This is what I do um, when my invent is full of herbs. <clears throat> you get two herbs a run so if I went again I'm going to lose one. So to me this is a full invent. If, um, if I teleport out, I can actually run up here. I can then use these Guam on this tall leprechaun, and bam, they're noted. And then I'll go back and repeat. I think I'm probably going to get like 50 Guam, maybe? That might be too many, I'm not sure. I'll get about 50 Guam, uh, and then I can head over to Port Sarim, and I can buy Eye of Newt from Betty's Emporium. And I can also get Vials of Warsaw. Uh, from quite a few places and then I'm gonna make like 50 attack potions and that should get me 10 herbal hopefully I decided to stop at 41 because I feel like this would be enough to get me level 10 there's the eyes of Newt ball here's the vials of water being ball and there we have it all the potions made and I reached level 10 very nice um, I'm going to actually decant some of these and keep three of them as it's going to help me when I need to do the killing the monsters method considering my attack level is one and it's very hard to hit anyway. So I can drop this and this now and I'm going to keep hold of three of these attack potions for later. But now I am able to go and do the dig site quest. Time to start the dig site. And that should be it. Dig site quest completed. Look at that, 15,000 mining experience and 2,000 herbal experience. That's beautiful. Now I can head over to the museum and clean finds to get 30 Slayer. That got me all the way from level 1 mining to 31 mining. That's insane. And 17 herbal. So I've just done a quick bit of research and I'm going to have to go and do the observatory quest now, and the reason for this is if the observatory reward gives me combat experience, I may have to restart this account as I will not be able to do what I wanted to do with this account. Um, I need the observatory quest for the final bit of kudos so that I can access Fossil Island. If I cannot complete the observatory quest, I will never be able to go on Fossil Island, and this changes everything. So I'm going to head over to do the observatory quest now and we will find out whether this account needs to be restarted or not. Alright then, so here we go, starting the observatory quest now. Well, there's my first death from my account. Um, I probably lost the lamps from that, that sucks, but hey. It's my own fault for not getting food. Right, well I ran back and got my stuff. Unfortunately I lost one of my lamps because it gets destroyed on death. Uh, I also lost my training boat and my jar generator, for all for the same reason. Uh, it's unfortunate that I've lost those items, but to be honest, if this quest doesn't go the right way, then this account's ruined anyway, so I'm not too worried. Okay, so here goes the moment of truth. I now need to look through this and see what the constellation is. Now, I need it to be anything aside from Aries, Capricorn, Leo, or Virgo. If it is any of those four, I have to restart the account. Anything else is perfectly fine. And what do we get? Um, that is, I believe that is Taurus, which is perfectly fine, the quest is not, I mean, the account is not ruined, thank god for that. Oh, you have no idea how nervous I was doing this quest, thinking I was going to get combat XP. So this should be Taurus, I should be able to say this is Taurus, and we'll get a super strength dose, which I'm just going to drop.
And there we have it. Account not ruined. Ooh. Oh, in addition, I've decided that I'm just going to use this lamp on Slayer. Uh, I feel I'm feeling the pain of limited inventory space, and I don't. It doesn't seem like I'm getting any more lamps, so I figure it may be because I've kept hold of this lamp. So now that that's gone, hopefully I can get some more random event lamps. Um, I also lost my jar generator as I mentioned earlier, so once this jar breaks I won't be able to catch ninja or magpie imblings anymore. I can barehand everything else though, which isn't an issue. However, if I get one more hunter level I'll be able to barehand magpie imblings anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, it's not a massive problem. Um, I don't need this anymore, I didn't even need that in the end anyway. I'm going to get rid of this as I can't sell that for much. Uh, I don't need this. Trying to clear up some space, I'm probably going to... I think I'm just going to drop these to be honest. I don't think I need them. I was holding on to them, but I think I've just been a bit of a hoarder at the moment. So I think if I get rid of these, um, and then I'll head over to Barok and continue grinding out the Slayer lamp so that I can get level 30 Slayer. So I just got a mime random. Um, I decided to do it. Just. Oh, I guessed it right. <laughs> uh, yeah, just so I could unlock the emotes. Um, if I got any of the clothing, I'd probably just drop it because I'd have nowhere to put it right now. But unlocking the emotes is nice. It gets them out of the way. That's going to be all for that episode. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to be grinding out cleaning finds to try and get 30 Slayer so that I can go ahead and complete the achievement diaries and we'll be able to use the lamps on Slayer. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe or whatever you want to do, and uh, I'll see you all next time.